In this session, we're going to set a foundation for talking about how we measure the burden of disease, what it is that people get sick, disabled, and die from. To move in these directions, we're going to talk today about a key health measure called a DALI. By the time this session ends, you should be able to articulate the meaning of years of life lost due to premature death, the meaning of years of healthy life lost due to disability, the meaning of a DALI, or a disability adjusted uh, life year, and the value of a health gap measure like a DALI for trying to get a better understanding of the real health status of a community, a country, or even the globe. Since the early 1990s, those working on global health have measured the health status of a population by using this concept of DALIs. As we'll discuss further in a few minutes, the DALI is a composite measure that adds together years of life lost due to premature death and years of life lived with disability. It's easy to imagine, maybe it's not so easy, I hope it'll be easier after this, to imagine why a health gap measure like a DALI can be so valuable, even if it's not perfect. And to get a fix on this, let me probe the students a little bit. So, um, Emily, what's the usual measure we use to gauge the health status of a population, including when we want to compare health status across populations? Life expectancy? Correct, life expectancy. The life expectancy in country X is 60. The life expectancy in country Y is 83. And therefore, we assume, or we understand that, this country with a life expectancy of 83 uh, has a much healthier population than this one. And indeed, if it were that great a difference, it certainly, this one would be much healthier. But I want to suggest to you that the use of life expectancy as, a, as the main measure of the health status of a population uh, is substantially flawed, and that there are really valuable reasons why we might want to use instead a health, health gap measure like the DALI. So let me give you an example extremely simplified example of two countries. Each of those countries has only 100 people. In this country, all 100 people got measles when they were young, but everybody lived to be, to, as, lived as long as they could, as we'll talk about more, uh, let's say to 83. Everybody got measles, but everybody, all 100 people lived to be 83, and then they died. In the other country, which is right next door, there are also 100 people. And in that country, everybody got measles. But of the 100 people who got measles, 10 got terrible sequelae of measles, including blindness and encephalitis and some other uh, uh, matters um, which produced lifelong disability, let's say. Now, but in this population here, they also lived to be 83. These folks lived to be 83. Everybody got measles. Nobody suffered disability as a result. These folks lived to be 83. Everybody got measles, but 10% of the population had substantial disabilities, but they lived to be 83. Rachel, in this case, if you used life expectancy as a measure, which population would be healthier than the other? They would look equally healthy because life expectancy would be the same. They, they would look the same because life expectancy is the same. And yet, Shailen, if you had a choice between living in the country in which there were no after effects of measles and the country in which 10% of the population suffered disability as a result of measles, in which country would you rather live? I'd want to live in the one without the disability. Shailen would like to live in the country in which people did not suffer disabilities as a result of measles. And in fact, it was with this in mind that people for a long time were thinking about how they could come up with a health gap measure that could combine the notion of dying before your time as well as living uh, sometimes for a substantial number of years with dis disability. So let's explore this further by taking the DALI apart and looking at the two different parts that go into uh, what a disability adjusted life year actually means. So the first part of a DALI is called years of life lost to premature death. In the little formulas, they might call it YLL. I wouldn't particularly worry about that so much as understanding the notion 
that this is years of life lost due to dying before your time. And then the second part of the Dali equation is years lived with disability. And this is the number of years you live with a certain disability, and as we'll talk about, those disabilities are in fact um, weighted. When you add years of life lost to premature death and years lived with disability, what you get is disability adjusted life years or DALIs. Now, let's look for a second first at trying to um, understand better the notion of years of life lost due to premature death. Here we see again, so the, the, the people who've worked on this and developed the notion of DALIs um, aspire, as we all do, to everyone in the world being healthy. Uh, we, uh, in Liberia, which is a relatively poor country in West Africa, uh, if you're 56, your projected life expectancy might only be another 10 years or so. In the United States, if you're 56, your, your life expectancy might be another 25 or 30 years. But because there are these aspirational goals of trying to ensure that everybody lives a long and healthy life, what people have calculated is the highest life expectancy at any, at any age at which you might die. And so the, year, the way in which we calculate years of life lost due to premature death is by looking at uh, the age at which you die, the highest life expectancy for people who are that age, and you subtract one from the other. And this, for example, looks at the, um, the um, framework that they used for calculating years of life lost due to premature death in the 2010 study of the global burden of disease. Now, we can also look at, um, now how would we calculate that? Uh, let me give you an example. This is really not so hard, and I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. So let's say there's an individual who happens to be 66 years old. And let's say that the highest life expectancy along the lines of the table you just saw for someone 66 is actually 88. If this person died at 66 years of age, we would have wanted that person to live as long as anybody can at that age, and that would have been 88. And therefore, the years of life lost due to premature death is 88 minus 66, or 22. Now, let's also look at an example of how we might calculate years lived with disability. This is a little more complicated, but once you get the hang of it, understanding the notion of DALIs and its two components, years of life lost due to premature death and years lived with disability, is really not very hard and I think over time will become something you kind of automatically understand. So years of life lived with disability looks at the number of years lived with disability, first of all. But all disabilities aren't the same. And so what the uh, people have done is they've worked on this over the last more than 25 years, is they've established what we call disability weights. In the latest Global Burden of Disease study, surveys were done throughout the world to get people's impressions and understandings of what the value of different disabilities was to their healthy life. And so uh, on that basis, uh, in the Global Burden of Disease study, and these are just some examples of disability weights, there are uh, disability weights for a wide range of potential disabilities, including some that are treated, partially treated, or not treated at all. So to calculate years of life lived with disability, we have to take account not only the years you live with that disability, but also the severity of the disability and the impact it has on your healthy life. So let's look at an example of how we calculate years lived with disability. Now, let's say we have exactly the same individual that we talked about a minute ago when we spoke of years of life lost due to premature death. Sadly, due to complications of diabetes, this person actually developed uh, severe problems and had to have an, a leg amputated at 53. 
Now, we know that he died at 66, so we lived 13 years with this disability. And in the Global Burden of Disease study, the disability weight assigned to this condition was 0.173. So to calculate years lived with disability, we take the number of years they live with the disability, we multiply it by the disability weight, and then we wind up in this case with 13 years lived with disability times this disability weight, and what we find is 2.25 years lived with disability. Now the DALI, as I mentioned, is a composite indicator that looks at years of life lost due to premature death plus years of life lived with disability. And if we take the example of the single person that we just examined, that person lost 22 years due to premature death by dying at 66 instead of 88. That person lost 2.25 years of, uh, uh, lived with disability because they lived 13 years times the disability weight that we mentioned. And therefore, this person had 24.25 DALIs. Now, it's important to understand that DALIs are bad. I mean, what you want is for everyone to live as long and healthy as possible and die at the maximum age uh, according to that table that we saw. Maximum possible, that live as long as they possibly can as we know in the world today. If that were the case, there'd be, there'd be no DALIs for your country or for your community. Um, in very healthy countries, and let's say Norway might be one of them, the DALIs per person is quite small compared to the DALIs per person, for example, that you would find in quite poor countries uh, in West, some, some poorer countries in West Africa in which um, there's a lot of uh, infant mortality, child mortality, onset of uh, non-communicable diseases at lower ages than in high income countries. So what you want to do is minimize deaths. You want to minimize years lived with disability. You want to minimize DALIs and try to ensure that your population lives as long and healthy as possible. Now, I want to come back for a second to um, just highlighting why this measure can be so valuable. So let me ask you, Yafit, if I might, can you think of a condition where the, me the, the, the DALI measure would be a more helpful one than if you just looked at deaths, for example? Yeah, probably um, anything doing with mental health, so depression, for example. Okay, we saw, I think, in the table that the disability weight for depressive disorders is actually very high. Now, some people do die of causes related to mental disorders. And yet we know that um, there are a substantial number of mental disorders, and mostly they produce disability. And sometimes that disability can be very long-lasting and very severe. If we only looked at deaths related to mental health, would we really miss uh, uh, the very substantial number of years lived with disability that are a result of different mental disorders? And let me ask you, Rachel, give me another example, if you would, of conditions where measuring deaths wouldn't capture the, the extent to which these conditions really have an impact on the health of your population. Many of the neglected tropical diseases rarely cause death, but can cause disability. Can you give me an example of some of those neglected tropical diseases that rarely cause death, but often cause substantial disability? Um, blinding trachoma. Blinding trachoma, uh, hookworm, uh, other soil transmitted helminths, lymphatic filariasis or elephantiasis. These are diseases too, which are rarely associated with death, and yet we know that they can cause really long lasting very severe uh, disabilities and sometimes disfiguring disabilities as well. And how about on the, on the chronic disease side, Elizabeth, or on the non-communicable disease side? Give me some examples there of where measuring the burden of disease or years lived with disability is a better measure than just counting deaths directly attributable to those diseases. Uh, with regards to uh, chronic conditions, uh, sometimes uh, chronic pain diseases like arthritis where diseases of inflammation can bother people for a really long time but not necessarily kill them. That's a, that's a very good point and uh, Shailen, give me another example if you would. Um, 
Diabetes. Diabetes. Diabetes, uh, actually, one might suffer the onset of diabetes at a relatively low age. Uh, diabetes can lead to substantial complications. Uh, people can live with those complications for a long time. They might succumb, but if we just looked at deaths due to diabetes and forgot to take account of or didn't take account of or didn't have a way of taking account of the years lived with disability associated with the diabetes, we would really miss a lot. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of uh, this very important measure called a DALI. It's not a perfect measure, and I encourage all of you to go and read more about the DALI, the evolution of the notion of the DALI over time since the early studies in the early 1990s until the 2013 study that was done of the burden of disease and to also read some critiques about the use of the DALI and, in, in fact, how the DALI is calculated. Nonetheless, I hope it's clear to all of you why the notion of a health gap measure like the DALI can be useful, and I hope you're now familiar with both why it's useful, what it is, how the DALI is composed of years of life lost due to premature death plus years of life lived with disability, and to calculate years of life lived with disability, you have to think not only of the years people have had the lived with the disability, but also the disability weight that's attributed to that. In the next session, we're going to speak extensively about the burden of disease. We'll also play with an interesting interactive set of graphics that are on the internet. And more specifically, we're going to look at what it is that people get sick, disabled, and die from, and how that varies by age, by sex, and by region of the world.